Hey guys, it's Josh, Happy Little Landscapes. We're back again in the HLL Studios, right? Hollywood, California. No, definitely not. But we're back again in the studio today with a 16 by 20 inch uh, canvas. Uh, it turned out really fantastic. Beautiful desert scene. Maybe this storm just ran through rain and now all of our little grassy bits and flowers are gonna start growing in the desert and it just changes color and it is literally breathtaking when you see them side by side from a, a dry desert to a freshly rained on desert, right? So you guys are obviously excited about painting this painting. That's why you clicked on the link, you'll learn how to do it. So we're gonna take you through it step by step. But first, check the description down below. Make sure you have all the brushes and all the colors that we're gonna be using for today. If you don't, my Amazon storefront link is down there. You can click on the link, get all your supplies, get them delivered within a few days, come back to the video and uh, you know watch it a million more times, right? Watch, 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 share, share, share. I can't reach everybody, so I'm counting on you guys to share these videos, you know, Whenever you do the painting and you post it in an art group, post it with the link, you know, share this. Hey, this guy's awesome. Hey, this guy's a piece of crap. This guy's not a good painter. Just whatever it is, just share, share and talk crap. I don't care. You want to talk crap about me? That's fine. But just share it, right? Get the link out there. Cause I can't reach everyone. So I'm counting on you guys to grab the entire worldly audience and bring them right into uh, happylittlelandscapes.com or our Happy Little Landscapes YouTube channel so we can get started. Okay, enough blabbing, Josh. Let's go over. We're gonna find out what colors we need from our other painter, Josh. I'm not gonna do that again. But we'll go over and we'll find the other colors that we need and uh, we're gonna get started. We're gonna do it. We're gonna do it just like this. <clears throat> hey guys, you caught me. We're putting on our Bob Ross liquid white. How is everybody doing today? I hope you're having a great day. I hope it's a nice, beautiful, sunny day for you, wherever you are, because we're going to paint a really dark, stormy scene, I figured, today. And uh, we're going to see what it looks like when we get done, right? You guys have already seen it. I have no idea what it looks like. So, <laughs> you know, we'll see what happens when, uh, at least I'll see. I'll see what happens when we get finished, what it looks like, right? We'll have this nice, kind of dark, stormy scene out in the desert, sort of similar to the one we did on that live, uh, but not a very bright sunset, a very dark sort of uh, real stormy painting, right? So <clears throat> we have the same colors as we did for last week's painting. Uh, Van Dyke Brown, Dark Sienna, Sap Green, uh, Thalo Blue, Lizard Crimson, Midnight Black, Titanium White, Bright Red, Yellow Ochre, and Indian Yellow. Okay, we're probably, we may stay away from these brighter colors just until you know, we get down to where our highlights are going to be, but we're going to figure it out, right? We will figure it out. So what I want to do, what do I want to do is the question. Why don't we do some little bit of blue, a little bit of crimson, just right on the brush. And we'll come up here and just start making, kind of testing out what the color is going to look like, right? Got to give it a quick test see where we want to go with this crimsony blue. Do I want to go more on the crimson side? Do we want to go more to the blue side? And I sort of want this sky a little bit bluer than uh, as my yardstick falls over. A little bit bluer than we did on the last couple paintings where they sort of turned out being a little purplish. The more crimson that we, that we use, obviously, the more purple the uh, sky will become. Okay, but we want a little bit of blue, even some lighter areas, darker areas, right? Don't want to have all the same color. That is no fun to me if you have all the same color on your canvas, right? I'm just covering down the sides. You never know what we're going to end up using, where our horizon line is going to be, right? So we'll take this. And just really get rough with it. Just blend it in, get nice and rough. Oh, so rough that we almost slid the slid the canvas off, right? Maybe not that rough. I need to go real, real ham, especially when you get up into your colors like this, because you want to have these little differences, right? These little changes in color. And those will end up being little shadows for your clouds, or you know. A bit of change in the sky is something you know a little bit of wind blown wind swept something or other right whatever you want to whatever you want it to become that's what it will become okay, and then we get this nice soft sort of lightish blue 
It's a bit of white right in the middle. It looks like a circle on the camera. Let's get rid of that just a little bit, right? All right, this doesn't look too much like a stormy sky to me though, right? Now that we get done doing it, it doesn't look very stormy. And if we're gonna paint a storm over the desert, I've lived out in Las Vegas for like 31 years now, okay? When it storms in the desert, it gets real dark and uh, real thick clouds, just real crazy, right? So we're gonna put some, some black right up into the, the corner of the canvas, trying to leave some of that crimson, some of the blue, right? We don't wanna get rid of everything. And I really wanna get some dark kind of color real deep shadows up into this sky. Okay, you can already tell just from the doing that little bit at the top that uh, we've sort of changed the look of this thing, right? And we don't know what, don't know what our clouds are gonna look like yet, really. Sort of have an idea in my brain somewhere of what the clouds might look like. But a lot of the times that will change just depending on, you know, how your sky looks when it gets done being blended out, right? How's yours gonna look when it gets done? That's really what happens is then you'll change your idea and you'll throw a bit of the dark over here. And all I'm doing is it's, a, it's right up here on the top of my, the, the edge of the brush. So every time I wanna drop, I wanna blend, I can blend with the bottom half, right? And when I want to drop color, I can tilt upwards and drop a bit of that darker color as I'm blending like that. Okay. All right, we've kept some of the pink in the sky. We've kept some of the blue. We got these darker areas. Now it's starting to look more like a stormy sky. All right, now what we can do is really fill up the sky with clouds and dramatic shadows and all sorts of crazy stuff, right? We like to get crazy. And when you paint with Josh, you literally make a mess, right? We've, that's all we've done with these colors. We took, you know, a few bright colors, a couple dark colors, and we just mixed them all up together and just made a mess, right? And that's what about Happy Little Landscapes. We make a mess. It's like literally the tagline, make a mess, baby, right? Okay, now you can, I can almost see We've got all these sort of different levels of clouds. Maybe these ones are further away and they come closer to us, right? And we can always sort of adjust and see, you know, what it might look like, where our white might go, where our highlights and shadows will go, right? Take a little bit more of that liquid white and just put it down in here, just to brighten this area up a little bit. Okay. Let's see. Get it all mixed up in there so we can't really tell where the black starts and stops, where the blue is, right? And some of these, like this big thick one, um, it just the paint just went down darker in that spot. So let's use it, right? Let's use that shadow and try to do something with it. In the meantime, let's mix up our, our blue and black and crimson. We'll make up our shadows right here. Try to make this video a little quick. All right, maybe we got a little bit of shadow in there. Maybe in our darker areas, they're up in here. All right, maybe save some of that pink up there. Maybe they're over here and they start coming up this way. This is, we never know, right? Well, even when we start blending it out, we'll be able to see, you know, some of our what it's going to look like. And we never know how far we're going to come down either. So you might as well do it. You know, we never know where our mountains are going to start, what the land is going to look like. And all of that can change just based on, you know, how you made your clouds. So we're going to come up here and just start making our little circles, right? Sort of blending it almost all the way away. All right, not, not the same across the board. We'll leave some areas darker and some areas lighter, but almost all the way away because it's going to be about the same color as what's behind it, right? All we want to do is have that little indication of a little stripe 
right? So we can drop our white in over the top of those darks and it should look like they're sort of sitting on top of each other. That is the goal anyway. Right, so we get these far off clouds, then maybe some white come in. Maybe we need another one over there. But every so often we'll have the top, the bottom of a cloud get cut off. But the top of a cloud get cut off by the bottom, right? So why don't we come in and we'll put a little bit back here. Just a little as bit of paint though. Right, not trying to, not trying to do anything real crazy. And then we'll come in and we'll just very lightly mix it up, right? Just so there's a little bit of difference, a little lighter color. Don't need anything too nuts. All right, just mix it, just very lightly. So you get this little bit of white, so way off in the distance, right? Take our brush, swipe it off to the side. And we'll come back in a little bit higher. This guy's a little bit bigger, man. We'll make like a little shape out of him. All right, and it all depends on how much paint you're putting down. I'm trying to do it very lightly, right? Just in our lighter areas here. And then we'll see what it looks like. We can always add more or we can come back and take away some shadows and add some more, you know, highlights or vice versa. We'll just figure out, you know, what it is that we're, we're kind of looking for. All right, so we're gonna come up in here, just start to mix that white together. And you can see why we've left those spots. It's so our white can sort of mix in and change color, start mixing with the color that's behind it. And then you get these sort of far off. Look, it's starting to look like I want it, guys. All right? And if yours doesn't start to look how you like it or how you want it, then you go in and you add a little bit of shadow somewhere or a little bit more highlight. Sort of mix those up. Let them mix differently, right? Don't, don't try to do them all the same, right? Let them over mix, let them mix all together. And we'll come back and we'll take some of this white and we'll come up here with it. Right? We don't need to really have a distinctive beginning or end to the cloud. That's sort of the shape that I'm going for. In this instance, there's really no edge to the cloud, right? It's all sort of fogged. Everything is foggy. Is it coming in, you know, here? Is it, does it stop? Is it coming at us? Is it going away from us? It's all how yours ends up looking. Put a little bit more shadow in here. I like that pink area up there. But maybe we need to come in with a little bit of shadow just to cut the top of that cloud off, you know what I mean? So let's come in like this. Bring this guy around here. Just like that, guys. Couple more bits of white in here. Maybe this guy comes in front. Totally up to you, right? You can do whatever you want to do. You leave the top a little darker. Maybe we'll kind of add a bit of white here. Take on, there's a bit over there. Maybe there's some in between. And again, you just sort of mix it, but you don't want to overdo it, right? If you overdo it, it will all disappear. And then where will you be? Out of luck, right? Out of luck. Up the creek. Okay. Swipe on these and then we'll take a step back because a lot of times you can be too close to the project and you can't really appreciate what it looks like until you take a step back. So let's take a step. You know, it sort of looks as though the ones on the top keep cutting off the ones behind it as they go further backwards. I really like how that way that, that, that came out. This almost looks like a, like the head of something, almost like it's got a, like it's got a hoodie up, right? It's always funny the things you, you see, almost looks like it has a hoodie with like a fox face and there's this dark eyeball. And people look at these things and they go, wow, it's really cool how he hid that in there. I really didn't. It just sort of does it on its own, really. Shh. It's our secret though. Don't tell anybody, right? Don't tell anyone. 
All right, how's my volume, by the way, guys? For those of you that watch me all the time, give me a comment right now in the video about how the volume is. And uh, I think we may have fixed our issue, right? Okay, let's see. This dark storm, you know what I wanted to try? Get a little bit of that dark blue, maybe out of these darker clouds down here at the bottom. We're gonna have this bit of rain come out, right? It's always, I have the worst luck when it comes to rain, right? Like I said, I've lived in the desert for 31 years. Wherever I am, it will be raining somewhere else. It says nothing I can do about it, but wherever I am at, the rain will find a different place to go fall. It really will. It really will. All right, now it looks like we got some far off rain from those clouds back there. It's just dumping down, right? May even be a bit too blue. So we're gonna take a bit of our black and throw it in there, right? Get your little shades of blue, shades of black. Darker bits, gray bits, lighter bits. Sort of mix it all up. So it looks like we got this far off rainfall way back there, right? Shoot, maybe it even comes over a little bit further. We can take it and literally grab it and bring it over and just deposit that other little bit of color down there. And it will still look like a, uh, a bit of rainfall. I know I'm gonna have something come over here. That's why I'm trying to move it. Trying to do it all sly so you guys can't tell, right? We literally, when you come paint with us, if you're new to painting with Josh, right? I, I literally make it up as we go along. I've never painted this scene before. I've never painted a sky that looks like this before. I've tried, but a lot of times they don't come out. You know what I mean? But we've never painted this scene before. We're literally making it up as we go so I can show you guys, you know, you can try something. You can try the land this way and then maybe it doesn't look the right or you can fix it. Right? We're just trying to show you guys different things that I've learned over my you know, two plus year career, <laughs> my two year career and some change, right? Different things that I've learned from, you know, instead of giving up on a canvas or, or making you know, the drastic decision to literally go throw in the garbage, which I've done before, right? I've been so frustrated. You just take it off the easel right into the can in the garage, right? But uh, this one, you know, these, these videos that I've been doing, at least this, these last few, we'll call them a little series, right? I'm kind of showing you guys that you can literally come up with it on your own. There doesn't need to be any planning, right? There's no planning involved and just how things can change. And if you have an idea, you know, and it doesn't turn out how you can fix it, right? So everyone's just fast forwarding over this bit anyway. So I'll just quit talking, but that's initially what these were really for, right? There we go. I just wanna mix up some of these hard lines. I want the color to be there, but I don't want these hard straight lines to be there, right? Okay. We got our far off rainfall back here. I just touched it. See what you guys made me do? It's far off rainfall back here. Where's my fingerprint now? And now we're gonna do our little desert scene. I've sort of kept this area light down here because I don't know how, you know, and you could take, you could do anything with this, right? You could do a, a, a crazy huge mountain or mountains off in the distance or a cliff or, you know, whatever, lake, you could put water down the bottom. You can, that's what's so great about painting to me is you can literally take your idea and change it. Just complete 180 in the other direction of what you thought you were wanting to do anyway. You don't just have to have a plan and stick to it, right? You can literally just ad lib and go crazy. All right, now we're doing this same painting with the same colors that we did last Sundays, right? I'll even put up a picture right now, right over the top of this. Put a picture up, Josh. See, right here over the top. Same color palette, very different painting, right? So let's see. It's just crazy to me what you can do even given the same colors and everything being exactly the same, same size canvas. These are even the same paints from that painting. They've just been sitting on my palette, right? 
same everything, and you can come up with these wildly, wildly different results. All right, taking all those dark colors, just sort of mixing them up, because we decided that scene sold so fast, right? We decided to mix up, and we'll do it just a dark, we'll do like a desert rainfall. So same sort of thing, right? We're gonna come over here with our palette knife, and just from the side, I wanna save you know, I want to show how far away that storm is by keeping it very close to, if not under the top of our nearest mountain, right? Which is just over here. Let's see. When we come in, we're just going to go straight across like that and come down. All right, take all of our dark colors, the crimson, the blue, and both the browns. All right, come like that. You can even have just little teeny tiny inconsistencies in the height as well. Doesn't need to be a perfect shape, right? If you wanna come over here, you can drop out a little, little bit just like that. Keep this mountain nice and dark. Sort of drag that paint from our edges, right? Keep this nice, sort of sharp edge right there on the side. And what, you know, what I'm doing is pushing hard and watching the paint, you know, go from underneath the knife and slide out onto the canvas, right? Maybe the guy comes down like this and we go off, you know, or maybe even a little bit higher. Maybe he's not that tall. We'll come down this way. See, we can change our idea just right on the fly. And because we have these two different stripes of dark paint, watch what happens when we blend it. You just watch. You just watch what happens. Why don't we put another little bit right up here? All right, a little piece like that. Maybe it comes down again. Just little imperfections in our mountain, right? Little small changes that you think might go unnoticed, but someone is gonna notice them, trust me. Okay, we're gonna take our brush, try to stay inside of our lines, right? And come down and just sort of pull that bit of cliff off so you get this fog at the bottom of it, right? I'm pulling it, pull it this way. And just look what happens. Just that little bit of lighter color right there, to me, indicates distance between this darker line <clears throat> in front, right? You can take some of that and pull it down from the top and just change, you know, the shape of our mountain, change what it looks like, how it's sitting. Right, we can even do a little bit of a little hump. A little hump back there. Just make it, you know, different, right? Just inconsistent, not the same. Don't want it to be the same. Bring all this stuff. Just gonna bring it down. And we'll pull it off this way. And it's very foggy over there, right? Doesn't need to be a hard line every time. Doesn't need to be. I'm pulling this out because I want it to be nice and soft and very thin back there, right? So we can put our highlights and stuff on. We got all this rainfall back there. And even here, we'll start throwing in some desert, some brown colored desert land, right? Sort of blending it in with that darker color below and these areas that we've left lighter, it's just automatically changing on its own. Right, the colors will change and blend all by themselves. You literally do nothing. All right, a little bit of dirt over here. And again, we're pulling these out very thin because I'm gonna have different colors over the top of it. You know what I mean? I don't wanna have, there we go. Get some shadow on this side of it over here. A little bit darker bits, a little darker color. Just a touch though, right? And it's just very minute changes in the color. And that's what people are gonna find neat about it, right? Very minute little changes. I'm gonna see what it would look like if I put a little bit of white back underneath here, like a, just a little bit of fogginess. We'll see that. It's not bad, but 
you don't really like it too much. So just even the process of doing that, we're gonna fog up that area back there. Who knows, there could be another bit of a mountain that lives way back in there, right? And take our like little micro liner brush and there could have been we're not going to use a lot of this so don't worry about it a lot there could have been a whole nother bit of mountain way back in there and it's much lighter colored and the differences in color is what everyone's going to love right and you can find these little micro liner brushes just so you can do little details like this uh amazon.com slash shop slash happy landscape art and just like my Etsy shop, etsy.com slash shop slash happy landscape art, made Amazon the same thing. Okay, we got this far off sort of reddish mountain that sort of ends right there where our, our dark one begins. So we'll just grab a little bit of that dark paint and put it in there just to push that guy back. Look at this. Just that little darker bit of line indicates that this little mountain being a different color and that line in front, this one's in front of the one back there, right? That one's back there getting rained on. And we can indicate that by sort of just messing up the top line of that in with our rain, sort of fogging everything up back there. And now that one's back there getting poured on, getting dumped on, it's lucky. Because the rain is never where I am and I don't know why, don't ask. All right, we're gonna take some of that dark color now come up into the darker side, I guess, of our mountain. And we're gonna start dropping on these chunks of dark paint. Okay, gotta go sort of sort of quickly, I find, if you want to, you know, have this paint sort of break for you, you know what I mean? If you're going slow and you don't have the right amount of pressure, it's just not gonna work and it's a pain in the butt. But once you finally figure out the pressure you need and how much paint you need on your knife in order to be able to do it, then you're just gonna fall in love, okay? You literally will. I went from hating these Bob Ross knives. I used the big plastic knife that came, you know, in those little like 25 pack of acrylic paints. It worked fantastic. It worked better than these ones did. And then I sort of forced myself to learn, you know, exclusively using this Bob Ross uh, these Bob Ross palette knives forced myself to learn how to use them because, you know, I had them. Why not, why not be using them? I didn't want to be afraid of them. Right? So let's say maybe we got a little bit of desert off the side here. Now here, if you, again, if you have the right amount of pressure, you can go slowly <clears throat> and just touch those little areas, right? Where you think the light might be hitting. But you don't want to cover up all of the dark, right? Maybe there's a bit of light right above all that dark back there. Just a little bit of texture. Okay, I always wipe my knife off and come back and get a fresh bit of paint if I want to keep the same color, okay? Again, we can pull down like this. And as you get further to the end, you can really push it in. You don't really need to have it nice and textured like we do back here. Because we're going to end up making some fog out of that anyway. So don't worry about it. Now I'm gonna take some green and crimson cause I'm sort of running low on my brown and we're gonna mix those up and you really gotta mix them up good. Okay, you don't wanna have too much crimson or too much green inside of your mountain. And these are just for our very dark bit of shadows back here. They will be a different color of brown, but they're much, much darker than the uh, than the, you know, high lit bits of our mountain anyway. But yet again, still being brown versus the dark black shadows that we put up, right? Lest we get confused. I'm thinking, you know what? I'm gonna drop a crazy lightning bolt in from one of these clouds, which is going to be the light source for our dark sort of nighttime-ish painting. And that is gonna look really cool. See, and again, that's the thing. Like you don't know what, what it's gonna look like until you really start doing it. 
So, you know, take the, take the chances, try something new and just do it. You never know what it's going to be. If you're going to like it, if you're going to hate it, right? At least you'll know for your next painting not to do that or to do that, right? I hope my audio level is good. Did anyone comment? Do we have good audio? Anyone? All right, if we're gonna go, let me put a little bit of crimson in here. Or a little bit of, of uh, Indian yellow and bright red, right? Just all in there together, but not overly mixed, right? And we'll come back in and put a little bit of color, a little bit of different color in different places. Right? And we got a little ridge over here. This little thing's got some shadow underneath it. Right. Again, pulling this stuff out because I want to make fog out of this sort of brownish color. Maybe there's a little bit of uh, light that came over to this side. You know what I mean? You never know until you do it. The whole thing is don't do the whole mountain, right? You want one side to be lit up. Don't need the whole thing lit up. You've got to have your shadows in there. Right. And come back in. Just darken up some of those bits. And I love how we have, we've got literally black shadows, real dark brown and very light brown. A little bit of red thrown in there. A little bit of crimson even, right? Or uh, yellow ochre. Yellow ochre goes so good with brown, you guys. Like, I feel like it's my own little secret that I've been keeping, but it goes so good with, uh, when you're doing something like a brown, like a, like a, desert style mountain, throw some yellow ochre in with that brown or on top of it like we're doing now, just to get those little differences in color. And oh, it looks so good. I really love it. Can't beat it, can't beat it. All right, I'm gonna get our clean two inch brush. We're just gonna start dabbing, all right? I'm gonna leave some areas. You can come up higher in some areas, leave some more soft, totally up to you. And we're gonna get over here, we're gonna dab this way. Because that's the way that we laid our paint down, right? I want to have all this fog, all this different stuff, these differences, these different colors, all back in here, right? We even got that far off mountain still way back there. Right? Again, come up in different places. Doesn't need to all be the same. You don't want it to look like you know somebody came along. Like Bob says, somebody came along with a razor blade and just cut it off, right? Ours kind of comes in, comes back, down, up, up over here, almost even to where we can't even tell what's going on over here. Is this land? Is it sky? What's happening, right? One thing this guy is missing back here is just a couple little bits of difference, right? Like you guys know me, it's all about the differences in color. And just from throwing those in back there, you know, it just gives that mountain a little bit of life. A little bit of shadow here, a little bit there. You know what I mean? Just changes the, changes the look of it just enough. And like I said, who knows what of that's gonna get covered. We may lose the whole thing, but as of right now, it looks pretty good right there. And before we get too far along, before we get too far along, why don't we come in and we'll add our lightning bolt over here, right? And pick a dark area, maybe right here, and we'll just come down towards our landscape. We got our rain back there. We can even do it the little teeny tiny little one back here. Right? You can say there's a bit, you know, it comes down here. So what I'm doing is using my yardstick to touch against my easel or the canvas, you know, wherever you want. So that way I've got a bit that I can rest my arm on, right? And that way I can do these little tiny details that I wanna do. And you just, with these micro liner brushes, you can get such fine, fine little details. Now, what I did here is I left a little blob sort of at the top, a little circle of it. All right, let's see if I can't do this out of your guys' way. 
And then what we try to do is just mix that in to the surrounding clouds just the littlest bit, right? And then sort of lights up that area and makes it look like there's a bit of, you know, light from the lightning back off in there, right? Now, I'm gonna get a lot, much, much, much more paint on this little tiny liner brush so we can come in and do our big lightning blast, right? Let's see, before it all falls off, why don't we do one and come over this way. All right, we're just making these crazy little line shapes. Even a little bit of extra paint at the top so we can blend it out, right? And why not, we'll come down here. Just literally wiggling my hand on the way down, okay? Now it doesn't need to touch the ground. Yours can, if you wanted to, can touch the ground, but it doesn't need to, okay? Now to me, because this one's much higher and much longer down means that that's closer to us in this much further away one right over here. All right, and then you can add all your little crazy little arms if you needed to, all right? As many as you want, really. But the problem is you put too much lightning in a painting and uh, it just doesn't, it just takes it away. Cause you wanna, you wanna see this crazy amount of lightning, right? If I put a bit of lightning underneath all these, but in real life, they would never really all happen at the same time, right? You get an entire sky filled all at the same time. See, so we can do this over our, our clouds back here because we blended them so fine, right? So finely, so well. We blended them so well that uh, we can go over these little bits of clouds and nothing's really happening. I really like that. And again, look, you can even take and just leave a leave a good amount of paint up there. So when we come in with our filbert brush, and we don't even need the the yardstick for this, mix it up, and you can see how it lit up the area of cloud that it was coming out of. Right? Looks really neat. I like this one already. Already digging it. Maybe you're sitting back there going, well, don't they normally have like these little bits of like little spires of rock that come up? You would be 100% correct, sir or madam. There we go. Little bits, just little imperfections, right? Little imperfections of different things. I want to get a little bit of white paint and really just mix these together down here just so we have this lighter area to bounce off of right art is about light play of light and dark so i want to have I can even take this guy and just pull him straight over Right? It just didn't make, it was hurting my eyes back there. Just didn't like the way that looked, so we're gonna change it up. A little bit of differences, some little darker browns, a bit of black. And then we can come in and just sort of fog it up a little bit. Okay, let's drop in another mountain. All right, little areas back here. It's looking really good, you guys. Okay, a little bit more black, crimson, and blue. Maybe a bit of that uh, dark sienna. A darker, uh, the, thalo, the Van Dyke brown, sorry. We're just all over the place today. All over the place, got some new equipment. So the videos can be better for you guys and I don't have to talk so loudly, right? You can hear my book reading voice. Welcome to the library. Welcome to the library of painting. This is where you will learn. All right, we're gonna take our big amount of dark black, 
and say, oh, we come down here. And the, the best part about painting a mountain, you guys, is it doesn't have to look like a triangle, right? Get some of that back there just for the buyer. If you want to see what it looks like on the side, you got to buy it, right? So it doesn't always have to look like a triangle, right? You can have these different, different everything, different bits, different bumps and humps. Right? And this guy comes up and there's a like a little peak right here and it comes down or maybe it's not so much maybe it's a little bit flatter area right and we decide what we want it to look like sort of cutting into that foggy sort of misty area that we left right now in this bit we can take that dark paint and literally just smush it in in different places, okay? Smush it all in. Because we're gonna take our brush and sort of mash it out. And the more little random areas of light and dark that you have, the cooler your mountain's gonna look. See how much of that mountain back there that we lost? But we still have that one stripe to give it that little bit of shadow. Okay, we're gonna take our one inch brush now. Start grabbing up this paint. And just bringing it down, baby. Staying in our lines. And come down here. And we'll just pull it off to the side. And that thing sucked up that liquid white. All that, all that liquid white we put down is now gone. These canvases are thirsty. It's a thirsty canvas. So watch, which is fine. We'll just take our liquid white right here, right? And sort of fill in the gaps. The liquid white helps it blend, guys. So if it dries up, or if your canvas, like this canvas, is very thirsty, and it sucks it all up right away, then uh, you're going to have to put on some more eventually. Right? And that liquid white helps it move, helps it become nice and smooth and soft, and lets it all blend together, right? Very neat little looking mountain we got over here. And we're gonna take more of those dark colors, our blue, black, and crimson, mix them up because I wanna have some shadows on this guy over here. Right? Maybe a bit more of that Van Dyke brown. Just give it that little bit of different color. All of our dark shadowy colors, right? And then we can decide where, you know, if any, the light is gonna hit. Okay, we're gonna have a little bit back here. Maybe it comes down. There's a lighter area and then a darker area over here. Totally up to us what it's gonna look like, right? You want to have these dark bits back here. And that way when we drop on our highlights and stuff, then it's going to look great. It's going to give our highlights a place to stick, right? Like there, we could do this cool little, cool little thing. And even if you just touch and sort of drag lightly, you can get the paint to really break for you, okay? There's a bit that comes off over here. Now we lost the majority of all that mountain back there is just gone. But that's okay. It gives us a different look to our mountain right up here in the front, right? So just love dipping your finger into a little bit on your palette that you weren't going to use. All right, let's see. I'm going to come back in again. You guys know now that I've told you my secret, right? Uh, I told you what I do, my little secret. A little bit of crimson in here. 
little bit of yellow, a little bit of red, okay? A little bit of Van Dyke Brown, just to darken everything back up. All right, don't, don't need it to be super bright. All right, we're gonna take it now, grab up a little bit, and just start very lightly sort of gripping onto our shadows over here, right? that. Again, we're leaving room for our shadows to be, right? You can't have it all this light, bright color. Let's do it upside down just because this easel is bugging me. You got to have room. You know, leave room for your shadows. Let your shadows shine through, I like to say. bit over here maybe watch this come back this way and now that whole little area has just casted a shadow over here right all depends on our brush strokes in this case our knife strokes right what they look like how they move you know like we come down here and then all of a sudden it changes direction over in this other place and right, it's like a little landslide then it comes down and we'll take a little bit of this color and pull it over here. And again, can anyone hear me with our new, you know, equipment? Can anyone hear what I'm saying? Can you hear me? Because I'm purposely speaking softly, right, with my nice inside voice to see if you guys can hear me. Okay, a little bit of that crimson and red. Shoot, maybe we'll have to... Come in here and just, you know, pop on a little bit of this reddish color. Just in different places because we're going to come back with the crimson, okay? I just want to have these little bits of, like, that real brightish red. So we go around the rounded part of our canvas over here. Now I want to come in with our yellow. I'm just going to brighten up everything and give it this different color, right? Watch this, you want a little sun right there? Chow! Put your sunglasses on for this one, guys. Here we come down and again, drop off in the other direction. And underneath that drop off, I would imagine, if it were me, there would be a couple extra shadows in here. Just because the, the light is just really reaching to get down this far, right? If this lit up this, it would have a little bit of trouble lighting up underneath, is my it's my thought anyway. All right, but maybe it got to the front. Maybe it got to the front. All right, bring it down and do whatever we want. You can literally sit and play with it forever. Again, don't cover up everything, right? Leave these dark areas for shadows. And if you get to a point like I get to often, very often I'll get to a point where I've covered up too many of my shadows and I want to come back in and darken some of them up. And that's exactly what we do. Down here in my mind, it would be very dark. So let's keep it dark, All right? Our darkness in there maybe there's a little bit in the middle there you never know just wherever you want to put it that's where it's gonna go there we go and again very thick paint we're just very lightly touching you know what I mean so whatever sticks is gonna stick and again I'm speaking very softly so let me know if you can hear me okay can I can you hear me now we're gonna see what about what this equipment is all about right all right, let's take our little fog making brush and we're gonna come down like this. See, I've made this little, little bit of dark line in between there. We'll come up a little bit. Well, I've got that little bit of light color down in there, right? Just makes it look like it's much further away. That's all you gotta worry about, guys. Is what is it gonna look like to the buyer, right? That's who we care about the most. 
How is it going to look to the buyer? All right, over here, we're going to get this much darker colored fog because we have all this dark colored paint. All right, but again, we didn't cover up even all of those little details. You want to be able to see them, right? You gotta see them, guys. Guys, you just, you gotta see these guys over here. Okay, we've had that little bit of these little differences in color, right? That's all we're really looking for. Now we can come in with our, with our bit of, uh, it's a little bit too white for me over there. With a bit of grass or something, you know, coming down, you know, coming down the hill, whatever. Let's wash some of these brushes off. It's still got a white handle, if you could believe that. That's how new it is. All right, this is turning out really fantastic, you guys. It really is. I really like it. Really. All right, what I want to do now is just get the littlest bit of this green on the brush, right? And we could have done it before, probably should have done it before. But I want to throw down just some green, little bits of grass, you know what I mean? And they're going to look funny right now, right? They look sort of funny if we're zoomed in. Are we zoomed in, Josh? Are we zoomed in? If we're zoomed in, they're going to look a little funny. Until we come back and just tap them until all those little lines go away, right? We're still, still have all that color, right? There's just no detail. We get that little bit of color, those little teeny tiny bits of, of different lines, different colors, different shades of grass, right? Now, if you've come over too far and hit your mountain over here, you can need to go back and fix your mountain. But I think for us right there, that is a good amount of green, yet still leaving this area a little bit white over here, right? And if we wanted to, if the grass is, maybe the grass is a little bit brighter underneath where that lightning bolt struck, right? So we just put a little bit of bright area underneath there. And if that's not bright enough, Oh, that might be too bright, guys. Oh, guys. Well, maybe not. Maybe not. Again, we're just trying stuff, right? A little bit of yellow ochre in there. Just to change the color enough. So we can tell there's a lighter area right underneath where that lightning bolt just come down. It's going to come down and just touch and light up all that grass. And wildfire. A little bit of that yellow over here. You can see how I'm turning my brush so we can stay, you know, on our little planes. That's what we're trying to do. We're trying to stay on the plane. All right, these ones are going down this way. These guys are going down the other way. Now, again, I'm going to take a little bit of that green, a little bit more this time because we've got some darker bits to cover. All right, we're gonna come down like this with that green. Come up the side. We can do whatever we want, All right? We're just staying on the edge of that little line. So it looks like there's a difference there. A little bit more green and we're gonna leave some space. And that's because as our brush starts to fill up with this green color, it'll change, right? And we can come over in different areas and add those different color greens, right? Don't want to come in and just have this real dark area everywhere, right? Every so often, it's good. Throw a little bit of dark in there, changes it, gives it a little, a little bit of hill or whatever. We're gonna have to do it upside down with this easel right here, guys. And then over here, we're gonna be behind our, our shadowy bit we may not need that green grass anymore. But we're not just gonna do green. We're gonna come in with the orange, right? Maybe brighten up a little bit. It's more Indian yellow really than orange. We're just gonna put it on these different angles, right? Sort of pop it in a little. And just keep mixing it 
That's why we wanted this stuff so thin down here, right? So you could mix it, mix these different colors in, throw some yellow ochre in there in some places. You know, it just changes the color. It's not all green all the time, grass. You know what I mean? Gotta have these different colors in there. There we go. It's looking really good, you guys, really good. We could even put a whole nother chunk of rock over here. We could do whatever we wanted to do. And you continue on. Maybe this is the grass that's back in the shadow back here. So we get a little bit of shadowy grass. And then you can't really tell what it is back there. I like that. Put that over there. These differences in color, guys. That's all we really want. Get a little bit more of that yellow ochre. Just so we have this little bit of a lighter area. Again, just as I see it, just the, you know, the way that it looks to me. You can even get, if you want to throw a couple little teeny tiny bits of red in there, that'll look really neat. Then you want to really get that red off of your brush, otherwise, it'll start changing it too much. You know what I mean? Drop those little bits of red color in there and then just dab them in. Just so it sort of spreads the paint around. Get these little differences, right? Looks really neat, guys. I really like this one. And it's very plain. Very plain and simple. And that's what I like about it. Very plain and simple little desert. Looks really cool. So if I don't know what's going on over here now. I mean, if we've got this little bit back there, we need to add something. We need to add a bit of shadowing or, you know, make, make the mountain continue over there. It's just, it's too much mystery that makes me look at it and look at it bad and go, why does that not look right? You know what I mean? Maybe the top of it's got a little bit of shadow, a little bit of sunlight hitting it from the other side. And then it comes down. We get a little bit of brown down in there too. There we go, just a little difference, right? It was a happy little accident that turned out looking really cool. Really cool. We have all this texture. Man, this painting looks good. Let me look at it back from where you guys are. I mean, it really doesn't even need anything else. When you really think about it, what else does that need? And I don't see anything that it needs, guys, honestly. And you could put, you know, you can put a big tree, put a big sticky bush in there right here, reaching out or something. I mean, you could do a lot of different stuff. So why don't we do that? We're gonna take a little bit of paint thinner right into our, our midnight black, maybe a little bit of crimson in with it, and just mix it up right on the edge of our, of our filbert brush. We're just gonna make two little branches, right, to get thicker as they come down. goes over here right, it's getting thicker as it comes down so we know this tree branch right here is in the front of us and then we can fix it with our our um, little liner brush and stuff maybe it comes down from up here just right through our mountain and over there maybe a little bit of a branch comes out over here all right totally up to us what we want to do Now we're gonna wash this filbert brush off because we're gonna be done with it. Oh, I'm gonna 
come in with the longest of the micro liner brushes that they offer, right? The longest one, biggest one. We're gonna come up here and we're gonna just start making our little branches of this tree. Okay, you wanna have a lot of paint thinner on your brush so you can get these, you know, very sharp points. I have a lot of paint thinner on there. Go across these lighter areas with our branches. Just sort of pushes that mountain back behind this little tree. Right, and this could take the longest part of your painting, depending on how many little tree branches you want to put in there. How many little happy little accidents did we make on the way doing it, right? Because we want our tree to be thicker at the base of the branch, obviously, right? Thicker down here, thinner as it grows out to the top or to the end, to the end of days, right? So it's a fine little line how you can get these cool little, little shapes like that. And remember, not all of your branches need to go up in the same direction, right? You can do as many as you want. You can do as few as you want. You can add as many little thorns and little things sticking off of it as you want. Totally up to you. There we go. Now we've got this nice little sticky branchy bush. Right there, not really covering our, our mountain too much, right? It's just something in front to look at. And that's what people like. They wanna see the distance in your painting. How far can you take their eye? Because to me and you, everything's right here. It's all on the same plane, right? It's all on the same piece of canvas, from the clouds to the very bottom of the grass, right? But how you paint it, you can make it look for you can give it distance. You can drag something much closer. You can do whatever you want. And that's literally the best part about it to me is doing, you know, whatever you want to do. What like we could we could we could draw, you know, we could put a UFO in, we could do whatever. And you hear everybody go, no, please don't put a UFO in this one, please. Oh my god, please. Right? And you can overdo this part, okay? So don't go too crazy with all of the branches, all right? I'm gonna go too nuts with it, okay? But we've pushed all, everything back now with this big bunch of, uh, of branch in here. And what I'm doing now is just taking the remainder of that paint and sort of highlighting it with, with like low lighting it, right? We're low lighting it with a little bit of that paint thinner. But we're not doing the whole little branch because I want it to look different in, in different lights at different angles, right? When you look at it one way and then you're coming down your hallway and you just happen to look over again and it looks different, that's a design of mine anyway. Right? That is by design. I want you to see different things at different times. from different angles. There we go. See, from over here, I can see all these little, little details. From over here, you can see them differently. And I love that. All right, I don't think we've got enough branches on there, guys. What do you think? Now, instead of making another brush dirty, like we could use that Bob Ross foliage brush, right? A little, uh, little round, half round one that he uses, yeah? You guys follow? We could use that, but then I'm gonna have to clean another brush, which isn't hard. It's not difficult to do. It's just like, why why do that when we've got one little bush to make? We could, I mean, you know, yeah. 
we can make it out of a fan brush. We can make it out of the one inch brush, the two inch brush. We can make it out of anything we want, right? Jeez, that looks really good, you guys. It looks so good. And it's very plain. There's not a lot to do with it, right? So we're gonna take up with our one inch brush, dab in all that thick paint, right? And then we're gonna come from underneath and turn our brush over. And we're just gonna pop up some bush, right? Just like that. A little, little bit of inconsistent bush. Now, what I need to do here, a little bit of uh, behind the scenes info that you guys don't normally get to see. I don't want to put it out on the edge out here. And that way the lip of my easel isn't bugging me too badly. You guys can find this easel, the exact one that I have here, on my Amazon influencer shop, right? Go to amazon.com slash shop slash happy landscape art, okay? Now you can see what I'm talking about here. I want to pull these out at different levels. Right, so up, down, now we're back up. Maybe this one comes down the other way. Now, I didn't make it so crazy that, you know, it's still staying in line with our, the slope of our mountain, okay? Even back here, you can add a few more little bits of, little bits of stuff, bits of grass and stuff. And just mix up, just so it's a bit darker back here, but people know what's going on, right? A little bit of line, but this one over here, we're gonna go back, wash that off because we're gonna use it again. I'm gonna come back and highlight all this stuff, right? So here we could do a little bit of more green and sort of swipe it up just to give the indication that there's grass back there, okay? Just some grass back there. Here we can do the same thing and just pull it down, coming down this direction now. All right, we can highlight the uh, can highlight the thing by grabbing some liquid white and uh, yellow ochre and come in and just touch in different places. Right, not covering the entire bush though. There we go. We'll come up over the top of that guy. Do the same thing with a little bit of red. See if we can get that to stick. Just right on the top. Okay, totally up to you. What colors you want to use? You can use Indian yellow. You can do whatever you want. You know what we're going to do? I thought anyway. Let me do a little bit more of a mountain. We can just bring this mountain sort of in front. Just by doing a couple different things there, kids. All right? It's almost like we've got this little wrapped around area. Again, we want our mountain to have all these little imperfections in it, right? This will just give us another bit where we can highlight just a little. And it helps me use up all the, the rest of this thick paint that uh, is just gonna go to waste anyway if we don't use it. Maybe the top of our new mountain starts in here. Maybe, guys, maybe, oh, hello. Hello, love catching those on video. Those are my favorite thing to catch on video. You guys can't even see my face. It's like, oh! All right, okay. sign her down there okay no this is very lightly done that's why it keeps slipping because I didn't really latch it up there the way it's supposed to this easel is really fantastic so I would really recommend you guys buy it but again totally up to you all right now we've used a lot of our dark color right almost all of it 
We'll take the last little bit of brown that we have, throw a little bit of red in, a little bit of Indian yellow and crimson and stuff, right? A little bit of that green in just to dull it the littlest bit. And then maybe our next little mountain guy lives over here. He's got some light areas and he's got some dark areas, right? And over here, we're not really worried about what it looks like down at the end down here because your mind will sort of do that for you. Okay, I just want it to be, and we can even make it all foggy and stuff too, if we wanted. Take some of that yellow ochre just to make these little areas sort of stand out. Right, just different places where the sun might be hitting. We'll take some of that red, the bright red, throw a little bit of the green with that. And we'll just mix them down until they're nice and dark brown. You can do it with crimson, you can do it with the bright red. You do it with anything. I just don't want to go back and get more paint out of the box to do these last little bits, right? So we get this kind of darker brownish bit of shadow down here. And again, we're gonna we're gonna blur it all up anyway. I want little darker areas sort of standing out. There we go. Throw some of that red in there too. It makes it look really neat and it stands out from the one behind it. Super thick and textured. A little bit of cliff over here. Now I can see that I want a little bit more shadowing and stuff in there. extra shadowing in there. There we go. All right, I broke down guys. I had to go back and get more black out of the box. I just couldn't make this as dark as I wanted it to be, right? I really want to get some black deep into these edges at the top because if our light source is way over there, then we don't know what it's going to look like. So we're just sort of making these little bits of shape and then we can take all the last bit of this stuff and really darken it up with that black if you have any left or if you've got to go get more out of the box i completely understand there's a bit of light on the edge over here there we go just mix up colors see what you like see what you can play with And see how they look when you put them on there. That's literally how I paint and just figure it out. Figure out what's gonna look nice, what's gonna look the best. And then just let her rip, man. All right, well guys, I really like how this one came out. Not even gonna lie. Gonna sign this sucker right down here in the dark. And we're gonna take the last little bit of this black paint that we have up here. And make our little birds out of it. Now I have the birds. So a little bit of paint thinner. If you really wanna make some small details. And why don't we throw our little family over here.
you go. And that's the fam. Me, my wife, my daughter, right? And every single painting, touch of uh, myself, right? Hope you guys like that I don't have my hat on for this episode. I've had complaints, well, not complaints, but comments about don't wear your hat or it looks better if you don't do this or whatever, blah, 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 blah. Right? Blah, 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 blah. Get a little bit darker. Bit of that green in there. It just changes the color up a little bit with all those little, all the bits of color that we used in here. Right? Get that little last little bit of the bottom. bits of, you know, lighter color orange down in here. A couple bits of dark green over here, you never know. It's really cool when you pop a little bit of color down in through those bits of grass. And just sort of blend it out by just tapping it, right? Bit of that yellow ochre come down in. There we go. Totally up to us what we want to do, right? You can even take in, scrape in a couple little sticks and twigs for these little trees. That won't even pop right off the top, right? Or out the side, whatever you want to do. Every little detail counts. So, this one's great, you guys. I really like how it came out. This little bit back here. We got the distance in between the mountains and stuff. All the little colors, the reds, the yellows, the greens, everything just turned out really great. And just how these, the lightning bolts sort of lit up these little bits of mountain back here, right? It just everything turned out really fantastic. Let me know about the volume of the video. Uh, let me know what else you guys want to see. If you want to see more blue skies like this, you know, I, I, I can never just paint a regular blue sky. It's always going to be this dramatic, crazy thing, right? And let me know how you like this tone of voice. Do you want me to be more chilled out uh, and just sit here and, and talk to you like we're best buds? Do you want me to put on the whole DJ voice? Do you want me to do, you know, I'm going to wear the Bob Ross wig? You know, what do you want me to do? Whatever you guys want to see, I'll think about it and then we'll do it, right? So you guys take care. You have the rest of a good day and uh, we're going to do the intro now and um, get to it. All right. You guys have a good day. We'll see you. Bow. You thought I forgot. Oh, wow. Bow. Thought I forgot. Definitely didn't. See you later. Pow! Desert. You're starting to get all the little buds and the flowers and the and the grass growing in the desert, right? Great little scene. Um, hey guys, Josh, happy little landscapes. Back again. So, uh, yeah, anybody else? You guys know where to go? And it would be my uh, website, happylittlelandscapes.com. Hey guys, Josh, happy little landscapes. Back again. 16 by 20 inch canvas this time soft storefront link where you can get all of your supplies from the easel to the canvas to the paints the little brushes the bob ross paint the liquid clear liquid white all the stuff right just all the stuff i wish i could just throw it all out right all that stuff uh on my amazon link amazon.com slash shop slash happy landscape art but and you want to hang out and learn how to paint or just hang out and watch me go crazy from all the paint fumes which are just invisibly constantly going up my nose right so sit back Relax, get your paint stuff out, throw your happy little landscapes apron on, and let's do it just like this. But sit back and relax and uh, watch this sucker come take shape, right? So without any further ado, let's hit it. We're going to do it just like this. Hey guys, Josh, happy little landscapes, back again in the studio this morning, right? Episode blah, 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 blah. I just really start keeping track of my episodes, right? This is Josh, let's call it season three, episode one, okay? Josh, season three, episode one, Happy Little Landscapes, painting extravaganza show, right? Woo! Psh, psh. <laughs> Got fireworks. Ow! <sighs> hey guys, Josh, Happy Little Landscapes, taking it down a notch today. Take it down. Down. I'm the worst dancer. So, but if you guys are ready to paint this scene, uh, you know, clap your hands. If you're ready and you know it, clap your hands, right? Clap your hands. Hercules, Hercules. 
This might just be an entire blooper reel and I won't even use this section, right? That's what happens. You're excited about painting it. That's why you clicked on that link, right? So check the description down below. You can find all your supplies at my Amazon influencer link. Uh, you can you can go to my website, happytolandscapes.com if you want. But until then, right? You're ready to paint. If you're ready to paint right now, click this button. Boop. Ah! And I think we're done.